You got it? <laughs> I everyone um, this is Mia and this is Jacob and um, we are here to um, start our first little episode if you will um, just bring out some more content just talking with you all um, today we're gonna be talking about submission um, I like to call it the sacred art of submission mm -hmm. and what it is and what it looks like even inside of the house so today we're gonna be narrowing down because we are to be submissive in every area um, on our jobs, you know, with the law, so forth and so on. Um, however, for today, we're going to focus just on the house life. What does submission in the house life mean? What does it look like? And why is it so difficult? Mm. So if I were to define submission, um, I often think of a yield sign. Like, and when you come to PV, because we live in a country, <laughs> um, there is a yield sign for when you get off the freeway and you have the right to keep going. However, if there's oncoming traffic, then you need to stop. Right. It's not a stop sign. It's a yield. See if there's incoming traffic. And that's what I think about um, when I think about submission. Is there anything you want to add to that as far as oh. the definition? Well, no, that's a good definition. I think that when a person submits and yields to that person that uh, has the right of way, mm -hmm. it keeps them safe as well as the other person. So mm -hmm. submission is to put yourself in a yielding place. Okay. Uh, Especially inside the house uh, with a husband and a wife, both parties are told in Ephesians 5.21, submitting one to another and fear of the Lord. So both of us are yielding mm -hmm. to one another mm -hmm. in reverence of God. And one of the most important things about that is, especially in, in, in agreement with your example, mm -hmm. God bless you, <laughs> is that not only are you safe, not only is the person around you, uh, the person that's coming on the traffic, um, driving the highway safe mm -hmm. is keeping the very highway okay of life safe okay so all right so it, which i love that example because i never thought about that um yielding keeps everyone say submission keeps our household right. our family safe mm. so if submission is designed to protect us then we know that we are to be submissive um one to another why do you think it's such a struggle to do selfishness well, yes, selfishness. I mean, that, I mean, yes, <laughs> selfishness. But, um, okay, so with that being said, how do we go around those negative feelings? How do we maneuver around the, the how it's hard? Because I know for me as a woman, a lot of times as women hate the word. It's like the S word. Yeah, yeah, I heard. I found out that. I you heard found, found that, that out? Okay. Yeah, I learned that <laughs> in life. It's the S word. It's hated. It's deplorable. It's like what? submissive. Because yeah. I believe when people think about the word submission, they think about pretty much being ran over. Right. Like, I have no say so. Um, when I get married, I just stay silent and quiet. And um, you do whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. And um, you just keep going regardless of where I'm at in my stage in my life. Um, in our relationship, how I'm feeling, what's going on. Um, it's almost as if submission equates I don't matter. Right. right. And um, I would say there's a little bit of taboo. Mm -hmm. You know, people, men, men have. Men? Not men, <laughs> mankind <laughs> has put it into the, a position to where I've, they put ta such a taboo on it. They've discombobulated the meaning. Uh, like right. it, it means what God wants us to do with the word submission is to edify our lives, but we take it as a destruction. I agree. So with that being said, um, yes, selfishness is one of the reasons why submission is so hard. Um, so how do we, as Christians, um, and as a Christian wife and husband, how do we live out being submissive to one another? Well, that's, that's a whole bunch. I would say this. Primarily, make sure that our lives have been surrendered to Christ. Mm -hmm. It's the very first submission to having a blessed household. Mm -hmm. um, you do an excellent job of being a submissive oh, wife. To thank me. you. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you. I will give you kids, but I want to know. I want, uh, no stripes. Yeah, no stripes. <laughs> but the blessing is, 
-hmm. When a person is submitting to the, to the Lord, mm -hmm. then they are automatically putting themselves in a position to submit to whomever else mm -hmm. has authority over them. That's true. The one thing I've learned uh, through our marriage is that as I continue to submit unto the Lord, you follow that. Mm -hmm. I've never had an issue with you, even if you didn't understand something, if you didn't like something. I've never had a problem with you being submissive to me mm -hmm. because you understood my submission to the Lord. So I think the main thing is we have to question, am I truly submitted to the Lord? Mm -hmm. If I'm truly submitted to the Lord, why am I having an issue submitting to my, my husband as a wife or mm -hmm. uh, even submitting to the counsel of my wife as a husband? Mm -hmm. Why am I having an issue? And again, I think some of the, the misnomers. Mm -hmm has been that submission means subservience. Right. And right. that doesn't mean that you're beneath. That doesn't mean you're a doormat. Mm -hmm. It's it's actually an equal thing. Right. Both of us are submitting one to another mm -hmm. in fear of the Lord and reverence of God. So if if anybody's going to be a doormat, it's going to be me. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I say me, because as a husband, it's my responsibility to lead out. So even if you, for whatever reason, decide to treat me like a oh, dog, oh I'll, have, <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be submitting unto the Lord. And mm -hmm. loving you through that. Mm -hmm. But um, respect is the main thing that submission actually speaks of. Okay. The latter part in Ephesians 5 verses 21 through 33, mm -hmm. it speaks about the wife respecting her husband. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's again, goes back to 21. In reverence of God, the right. utmost respect. Right. So what we're doing is we're saying we're trusting the one over us so, we work, so they are worthy of our yielding to. Well, you touched on a lot of <laughs> sorry, uh, a lot of it for both men and women. I know um, one thing that you've said over and over again. If we're giving counsel to couples, um, mm -hmm. premarital premarital counseling, um, one of the things that you've said, like some in our marriage. Now, this is our marriage, y'all. Okay, this is our marriage. A lot oh. of time. <laughs> Thank you. In our marriage, one of the things you said that I make. A bulk or the majority of the decisions right you make a majority i make the major you make the major and um there was just for me empowering but in those moments when he when you make uh, the major decision sometimes it's frustrating for me because mm -hmm. i've been used to okay right. let's just go ahead and do this because a lot of times you don't care right. <laughs> right. so that's one of the reasons why i make a good portion of the majority of the decisions mm -hmm. um because, you know, if it's not something that's going to hurt a house, would you ask me, can we afford this? Um, is it going to hurt us? It's going to put us out of the will of God. Mm -hmm. Then um, with you, it's like, okay, right. I get sushi today. No, if, do we have it? Okay, you know, jeopardize us. Go ahead. Um, but um, when it comes down to the weighty decision, especially something I'm passionate about. Mm -hmm. You know, I know at times it's difficult for me to... I want to say, it's, yes, it's a challenge being submissive because I think I'm right. Mm. Which I think goes back to your original statement of why is it so hard to be submissive mm -hmm. to one another? Right, right. Because of selfishness. Mm. And um, really in those moments, I know I have to take a deep breath, go and praying. Um, mm. But then I also have to trust the God inside of my husband. Mm. I have to trust that God, um, one, I know whom I married. And I know that you have a relationship with God. And I know that you're going to lead, lead us in a righteous way. Um, oh. And uh, <laughs> um, so I know that, you know, you don't make big decisions lightly. You don't take them lightly. Now, so what should people do if they don't trust the God mm -hmm. inside their spouse? That's, that, that key word, trust. <laughs> because, because, and I apologize for cutting you off my quick. But the thing is, when you speak about that trust, mm -hmm. sometimes if you can't trust the God inside your spouse, you mm -hmm. have to still trust God. Right, 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 right. Submitting one to another and fear of the Lord. The first right. person that we're submitting to, all in all, is the Lord. Right. If we're not submitting to Jesus, then it's going to make everything else more difficult because the conduit starts with the head, who is Christ. Right. So if Oh, uh, if, if a husband or a wife on the other end of the spectrum is having difficulty trusting their spouse and, mm -hmm. and submitting to them, mm -hmm. then and for the sake of for the sake of now, you have to move them out of the way. Do you trust Jesus? Mm -hmm. If you trust Jesus, then you have to submit to him. Mm -hmm. If you're submitting to him, then you're submitting to the one who has power over the wife or the husband of whom that you have an issue with. Mm -hmm. So and, and it's about 
actually allowing God to display his submission mm -hmm. uh, power in you mm -hmm. by allowing you to submit to whomever else. So that's why we submit to the word of God. Uh, as you said, if you don't understand something, you go and you pray. And I walked in on you several times. <laughs> to have Praying. a mean, fervent prayer face. Yeah, I was like, on your knees, just cry out to the Lord. Like, that's good. So but, but I think that's the main thing. Okay. All right. Well, um, what should couples do? Well, I guess you answered that question. You know, I said, what should couples do when they have someone they're living with who is difficult? Mm. And they refuse. Maybe they're not saved. Mm. Um, maybe they're um, struggling with even some hurt of the past mm -hmm. um, from their spouse. Um, maybe they're hurting um, from something someone they have sinned against them. Mm. And I've forgiven you, mm -hmm. but I'm still hurting by you. Right. So I know the answer is simple by just do it. But how do we work through these emotions of, I know I am to be submissive, but it hurts me too much too. Much too. Yeah, that's a whole lot. That's it's, a whole lot. I'm unpacking it. I'm making it deep, I'm making it harder for you. No, it's not that you're making it more difficult. It's just, you know, it's that's the reality of the states that well, the coach that God blesses us to counsel. Mm -hmm. Uh, feelings are important but not empirical. Right. They have the ability to move us, mm -hmm. but they should not have the ability to uh, compel us to disobey God. Right. Mm -hmm. The most important thing about a person who, in my, and this is what I believe the Bible teaches us, mm -hmm. because now what we're talking about is love as opposed to submission. Mm -hmm. And when you've been wrong, violated, in whatever state, and the fabric of trust has been burnt up. Mm -hmm. Now it's going to be very difficult to submit to somebody because you don't trust that person. Mm -hmm. And because you don't trust that person, now a, a portion of your love has also been eradicated mm -hmm. with, along with that. But the main thing that that relationship needs, both internally, externally, inside the person as, as well as the marriage, they need love. Right. They have to have love now because that's the only thing that's going to really build Mm -hmm. the uh, the bridge of submission build the, uh and, and reconnect certain things in regards to trust so proverbs 10 12 says love covers all sin mm -hmm. but that's the thing that nobody wants to do right because right. love is that's what jesus down the cross for saying right. love is going to cover that right love is going to conquer that uh first peter 4 7 and 8 says to be watchful and prayerful mm -hmm. the verse the following verse says love covers a multitude of sin right mm -hmm. So now we see love is designed for sin. The mm -hmm. very thing that causes mm -hmm. pain, the very thing that causes distrust, the very thing that hinders submission, love will begin to right. mend those things. Mm -hmm. But you got to be watchful. You got to be prayerful. Right. You got to have people that you can talk to, people that you trust that's going to give you godly, wise counsel. Mm -hmm. Right. Don't just listen to folks who try to give you what you want to hear. You mm -hmm. have to talk to people who's going to give you what thus says the Lord. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes you're going to talk to people who are not going to give you what thus says the Lord, but they're going to give you the truth. Uh, don't don't avoid those things and always be honest with yourself. Am I am I wrong? Mm -hmm. uh, I have a right to my feelings, but I have a responsibility to uh, obey God. Mm -hmm. And as we teach our kids, feelings ain't indicative of truth. Right. So eventually, we have to start depending on the truth of God's word mm -hmm. and uh, the counsel of godly godly counsel more than anything. That's, see, that's why you're so wise. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that one. Right. Well, um, we want to pray for you on the other side of the screen. If you uh, if you allow us to honor um, whatever you're struggling with today, I hope that this segment has been helpful. Whether you are married, maybe you're not married, maybe you're single, these are some th these are some things to think about mm -hmm. before saying "I do." Amen. Um, think about hard hard times. Am I able to submit to this person? Do I trust the God inside of them enough? To submit, and that's a whole different section on itself. Uh, um, one of the young ladies in our church talks about frequently, like I want to know some things about single folks. Uh -huh. So, and I would even <laughs> <laughs> um, admonish or whatever you hear people say concerning couples, take that as far as what you can be looking for, what can you be searching for when it comes down to people and their personalities. So, we want to pray for you um, on the other side of the screen. That God will be with you. If you're in a struggle right now with um, trusting 
your partner, your spouse, the one who God has um, called you to be with. We want to pray you're strengthening him. Um, whether your love is burned, that fabric, as my husband said, has been melted away. We pray God, um, he already gave you the power to love them. Amen. Um, but continue to give you the strength and then mess up morning. He continues to comfort you. Uh, run to Jesus, not away from him. Amen. And um, even if in the, for the couples who are okay right now, mm -hmm. um, but tomorrow you may have a difficult storm. Pray over yourselves for the future that God continue to keep y'all together. So do you want to go ahead and close this out? Yeah, that's fine. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this privilege of coming together and praying and interceding on behalf of those that you know. We may not ever see them, but God, you know them. We pray, God, that their relationship with you, their trust, their faith, uh, their reverence with you will first be built, that they will be established, strengthened. Yes. And God, it will be uh, a conduit, yes. God, that you will use that, God, to build through love, trust, uh, respect, honor, and integrity, that the bonds of... Uh, Righteousness, holiness, and love, God, all those things will be able to mend relationships yes, Lord. in the name of Jesus. You are the God of all power. So, God, if you're able to raise the dead, surely you're able to repair a broken heart. Yes, Lord. So, we thank you in advance for your healing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Love y'all, man. Go first. Pray you're blessed.